Hi, I'm Greg Kane, Head of European Investment Research at Pigeon Real Estate. Now, we've got some concerns at the moment about several things. We've got the Delta variant, we've got supply side disruptions, and sentiment's fallen back a little bit, and, and there are some question marks about the recovery. When we look a little bit further ahead to the next cycle, we've got things like low interest rates and sluggish productivity, and even aging populations, and all of these things point to lower global growth, and that typically means lower real estate returns. In this context, I want to explore why we're still optimistic about the prospects of real estate performance, both in the next phase of the recovery and then through the next cycle as well. Now, to do this, I want to start with the big picture. And really, that's that property is a real asset and it's an integral part of the economy. Buildings provide spaces for living and working and also for businesses to produce and supply goods. And that means that as long as there's economic demand, there will always be real estate demand. And because of these characteristics over the past few years, uh, really real estate has demonstrated a very strong income resilience. And crucially, it's also adaptable. Property is not a fixed asset and leases have some flexibility. And that means that buildings can be repositioned to meet the changing needs of occupiers and societies. And we're seeing this now as real estate adapts to meet needs for supply chain ex expansion, for example, or more flexible office layouts and more senior housing to meet the needs of those aging populations. As an asset class, these characteristics are valuable to investors. And that's especially the case at the moment. If anything, the low interest rate environment has really been reinforced by the crisis. And real estate investing offers those dependable cash flows. So the idea of real estate equity and debt investments as a sort of fixed income alternative is growing and that's driving even more interest in the sector in general. Now that means there's more capital on its way. And this brings competition for deals and rising investment volume as we're seeing again now, but also opportunities because institutional participation drives things like transparency and liquidity. So now I want to drill into a few of our sort of big picture themes. And firstly, I want to talk about the shift away from the defensive mindset that really dominated through a lot of 2020 and in the early part of this year, and that investors are now really back into the mode of thinking about growth and value creation. The worst of the pandemic is behind us and our leading indicators have picked up pretty sharply. And really there's a sense that occupiers and investors are looking beyond those near term concerns and really starting to plan for the future again. And this is bringing with it a real sense of momentum. Now, I've already mentioned this on the sort of capital side, but we're seeing it on the occupier side too. The tailwinds that had been there for logistics and suburban residential remain quite strong, but the recovery and growth opportunities are broadening out. We're seeing signs of a pickup or at least some sort of stabilization in major CBD office markets and in in-town apartment markets, particularly in those global cities that were most affected by the pandemic. And we're even seeing some signs of life in the retail market too. Now, in many ways, this is still selective and investors really need to be focusing on what occupiers want in these you know, still challenging times. Space demand is growing again, but for us, affordability is a big topic. So that could mean affordable office space that offers value for money and productivity benefits to tenants. But affordable living spaces too for populations in the major cities. And as investors, we really need to be focused on providing assets that meet the requirements of end users. Now, I also want to think about pricing. Obviously, we've seen capital inflows. We've got this improving Occupy market performance, but that means values are rising again. Yields have fallen to historic lows, and there are question marks about how much value real estate offers today. Well, given that low interest rate environment, our assessment is that pricing is still broadly fair value on the whole across global real estate markets. So it's still a good time to invest. And core assets still offer good long-term investment project prospects. But of course, when we look ahead, many investors are looking to take on more risk to beat those benchmarks, given that low you know, returns outlook I talked about at the top, and given that improving conditions that we're seeing. So we're you know, now starting to look beyond those core assets to generate returns, and that means a push into non-traditional sectors 
and also operational assets, senior housing and data centers, for example, where really asset owners are looking to capture value, not just in the buildings, but how that real estate space is actually used. And the final sort of big topic I want to mention is really the ESG agenda. If we think about something like climate change, I talked earlier about how property is a crucial part of the economy, and that means real estate also has to be part of the solution. Investment opportunities and outperformance for investors are, you know, are there if they can deliver truly green buildings that play a role in tackling this kind of problem. So bringing this together into a conclusion, you know, we really think that we should remain optimistic about the prospects for real estate performance and opportunities despite those near-term challenges and when we look through the next cycle as well. In the near term, it's all about building on momentum. And over time, given that low returns outlook, we want to look at ways to generate returns above those core benchmarks, selectively taking on risk and investing in things like operational assets too. And finally, we can really think about how we can use ESG investing as a way to drive out performance, but also help be part of a solution to things like climate change at the same time. For more information on our views and to read more about our outlook and investment opportunities, you can look at the full report on the link below.